In this lesson, we're going to look again at patterns and sequences, but in particular, we're going to look at trying to create a mathematical formula for a pattern or a sequence. Once you create a formula for it, it becomes much more powerful, much more versatile, and you can use it in different situations. So we're going to look at a couple of examples of looking at the diagrams, and then looking at a pattern through a table, and then creating a formula, and then using that formula. So let's look at this um, first example here. So we've got an internet cafe, um, which, to be honest, they were around a long time ago, and some some still survive a wee bit, but most people have got phones and whatever else, and internet cafes are not as big as they used to be. But so, uh, the people that went to internet cafes were called surfers, not people that go out and see and surf and things like that, but surf the web. So an internet cafe, three surfers can sit around each table. So we've got a table here, a triangular table. This is meant to be the top view of their shoulders and the red, I guess they've got red hair or something. Um, and then you've got two tables and then you've got six people, three tables and nine nine people, okay? So um, drawing up a table helps to, to kind of see what the pattern is. You, probably, you can probably see it already. We are going to go into more complex ones later on in a different video, but these are simple ones to start. So what you do is you write what the two things are, the two variables. We've got tables here and we've got number of surfers. And we're going to shorten tables to T and shorten surfers to S. And that's really for our, um, for our formula. But the tables, right, so let's look at that. So we've got one table, three surfers, there it's there. Two tables, six surfers. Three tables, nine surfers. Now we can continue without the diagrams. We should see what's going on here. You can see that each time when you add a new table, you're getting three more surfers. So if you had four tables, you get 12. Five tables, well, what would you have? You'd have 15, wouldn't you? And then six tables, you would have 18. So you're adding on three each time. But a better way to look at it is to look at what's going on down the way. That's how you get your formula. So and again, the same thing's happening each time going down the way. Now, hopefully you can spot what's happening to the 4 to get to the 12, the 3 to get to the 9, the 2 to get to the 6, and the 1 to get to the 3. So instead of looking along the way, let's look down the way. And what you'll see is we're multiplying by 3. Now, it is going up in 3s but we're also multiplying 3 to go down the way. So really what we're saying is to get the number of surfers, you do 3 times the number of tables. And a shortened version of that, and more of a formula, would be S for surfers equals 3 times T for tables. And you could even shorten that to S equals 3T. And there we've got a formula. So you'll notice here, whatever it's going up in, is, it seems to what you've multiplied by. So it's gone up in threes, and that's ended up being a multiple of three. All right, let's look, look at how to use this. So sometimes you're asked these kind of questions uh, to use the formula. So it says here, use the formula to find out how many sufferers will be sitting at 30 tables. So this is a kind of more powerful version of using the formula instead of starting off with three diagrams. So at th you wouldn't draw 30 tables, would you, to work it out? So if we know that t is 30, then all we do to get this is 3 times 30, and that's going to make 90. So straight away we've worked out how many surfers will be sitting at 30 tables by times it by 3. Okay, here's another um, question like that. Use the formula to find out how many surfers will be sitting at 50 tables. Well, we know t is 50 this time, so 3 times 50, that's 150, isn't it? Dead easy. Without drawing any diagrams, doing anything like that, we came to our conclusion. Okay, there's other types of questions you'll get. You get these type of questions where you're told the number of surfers and you have to work out the number of tables. It's a kind of reverse question. The ones before, we knew the tables and we had to work out this thing over here. But in these questions, we've been told the number of surfers, this bit here, and we're asked to work out T. So let's look at how that's going to look. So we're saying, well, 45 is equal to 3 times something, basically. So you're thinking, 3 times what makes 45? Now, some of you have probably already got it, it's 15. But what do you do to the 45 and the 3 to get that? You can undo the multiply, so you divide by 3, and you'll get your 15. Okay, let's look at that idea again. So, use the formula to find how many tables would be needed for 120 surfers. So, this bit's 120, isn't it? And you're trying to think, 3 watts make 120. Again, 
do the opposite of times here, which is divide. So you divide by 3, and hopefully you've came to the conclusion that's 40. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and that down to 0 is 40. Okay, let's look at that idea again with another um, pattern. Okay, so this time we've got matchsticks. I've got my table set up, and I'm going to try and work out a formula for if I've got how many squares I've got and how many matchsticks I need to make that square or that pattern. So we can see here that one square gives you four matchsticks. Notice I've set up S for squares and M for matchsticks. Two gives you eight and three gives you 12. Now we can continue the sequence and we can say, well, if you added another square on here, how many matchsticks would you need? Well, you would need an extra four, wouldn't you? So that would be 16. And for five, you need an extra four. And I guess that's going to be 20, isn't it? And then, and then 24. So you're adding on four each time. So you can come to this conclusion that you're adding on four each time, but the, the more powerful way to look about it is to look down the way. What's happening down the way? How do you get from 1 to 4, and 2 to 8, and 3 to 12, and 4 to 16? You should be able to spot that you're times in by 4. So whatever it's going up in is what we multiply by. So let's get a formula. So the formula is to get the number of matchsticks, and you'll notice it's the bottom one we're always working out here for this side. So the number of matchsticks is 4 times the number of squares. And again, we'll shorten that down. To get the number of matchsticks m four times s okay so there i've got my formula we'll just do a couple of calculations with it and um, to work things out so use the formula to find out how many matchsticks will be for 40 squares so i know that s is 40. okay four times 40 well four fours are 16 chuck on the zero 160. Let's try that other type, okay? So use the formula to find out how many squares there will be for 200 matches. So that's telling me this. That's 200, not this one. So it's 200 equals 4 times S. So we're saying 4 watts make 200. Think back to what we did last time. Divided, didn't we? So, um, oh, that should be an S. Um, so that's 200 divided by 4, and that gives you 50. So I'll just change that to an S there, and S gives you 50.